I think it's uh, an immensely proud m moment for my team and Cambridge University and ourselves and Smalls, the shipyard who've made this and been a brilliant company in putting it together. Um, so it's a, it's a tremendous British engineering achievement and it shows what this country can still do in an incredibly short time and uh, on a reasonable budget. The principle of it is simply a float goes up and down in the waves and it drives a device called a linear generator and that converts the up and down motion of the float directly to electricity. But there's a vast amount of energy in ocean waves. In fact, if you take an ocean wave, there's over five times as much energy per linear metre as there is with wind. Um, wa waves are also far more consistent than wind. They're a lot less fickle than wind power. Um, and so the idea of this invention is to uh, harness wave energy in wave farms made out of bigger versions of this device. One wave farm comprising 101 megawatt units would generate 100 megawatts of power, enough to power a town of 60 to 70,000 houses. Around the UK coast, which is perhaps the most favourably disposed for wave power in Europe, there's enough wave energy, it's estimated, to generate 40% of the whole UK's electricity supply. So when that wave energy is harnessed eventually, it will have a dramatic impact upon the wave energy needs of the country. One of the lovely things about this technology is that it works from the most modest waves up to the biggest waves. And we have um, a self-protection feature, so that if the waves get a little bit too boisterous, the linear generators simply pull the floats out of the water, tuck them underneath the um, structure until the, wave, the storm has passed, then they're allowed to go back into the waves and continue generating. The real end target is when, in a partnering arrangement, we take this forward and put proper full-size things in the sea connected to the national grid, and that'll be the moment to pop the champagne, I think.